On today's show, we'll meet Paige Barnett from Epic Level Entertainment. Now, this is a web series production company who creates content for clients as well as their own in-house productions. And their quality is top notch. I really expect to see more high quality content coming from this exciting production company. Welcome to Inside the Legend where we bring you history and fiction's most notorious figures and pour hot, steaming light on history's mysteries. Join Chaz Hannigan and Rhonda Cocapelli as they probe Inside the Legend. So I work for Epic Level Entertainment and we're a production company and we've been around since about 2004. And the company was founded by two self-described described gay, um, gamer geeks. They've um, been working actually in this industry for quite a long time. Um, John Frank Rosenblum and Cindy Rice. John Frank has worked on Doctor Who, he's worked on South Park, he's, he's been around in the business, mostly in television. And then Cindy Rice came from a background in game and game design and game licensing. She worked first for TSR and then later Wizards of the Coast, which produces D&D &D games, and then Hasbro, which took over um, WotC, as they like to call it. And so um, it, it seemed like a, a perfect mix when the two decided to go out on their own to really um, go into the sci-fi genre, fantasy sort of production. And so they've been producing made-for-TV movies, independent movies, um, smaller uh, programming like um, Zombie with an X, which is a web series that's been around since about 2005 and has over 13 million views. It was early on one of the, the forerunners in, in um, web series. I became involved uh, when they started producing Bite Me for the Machinima Company. And Bite Me is a web series about three gamers who, um, it's kind of funny because if, if they weren't gamers in the zombie apocalypse they would probably just be gamer losers right. but because of the zombie apocalypse they've been training their entire lives for this and they are the world's heroes okay. it's because of these gamers and and the gaming skills that they have learned over the course of their lives right. that they can actually save the world and essentially get the girls <laughs> the and so sure so um bite me is a machinima property mm -hmm. and they um wanted it made in collaboration with Capcom, the gaming company, right. so that it really spoke to their audience. They would have games that would um, they'd be able to show right. within the, the web series. And, and Capcom, for the first season, we used Dead Rising 2. And then the second season, we used um, various uh, Resident Evil games. Oh, okay. And so they came to us and said, hey, you know, you guys are gamers. You speak, you speak geek, right. essentially. <laughs> you can talk to our people. Right. You are our people. Right. And um, we'd love you to make this. And so uh, we did. We were the production company for oh, hire, okay. essentially, in that case. And, right. and we filmed it all here in Los Angeles. Oh. We filmed it uh, the second season at Lacey Studios. Oh, and then um, the first season just at a house... Uh, probably like the Van Nuys area, oh, Sherman okay. Oaks area. Okay. The first season is uh, runs about 45 minutes total. It's oh, okay. about five episodes, okay. seven to mm -hmm. 10 minutes mm -hmm. each. And then the second season is 10 episodes. Oh, okay. So it, they really blossomed. Yeah. The second season grew, developed the storyline. There's a, a larger story arc. It's much more, um, you know, Revenge of the Nerds meets Ghostbusters okay. meets Scott Pilgrim. Right. It was. I started out, I, I had the fortunate opportunity to start out with um, Bite Me One as a production coordinator, and then, you know, I, I proved myself and I, I worked my way up to one of the co-producers. It's almost the same job. <laughs> when it comes down to it, just just keep that ball rolling. So It's all up on air, and actually there is a, a compiled second season, so you can see it as a movie version as well. And that's all available on YouTube.com um, slash show slash bite me, okay. <laughs> something like that. It was not entertainment related. 
related whatsoever. Okay. I came from a background in aerospace economic development and then later nonprofit fundraising. Uh -huh. But the key line item in, in all of those roles was um, project management. Right. And that's really what production and producing is. Uh -huh. So it was a good fit. And when I moved down from rainy Seattle to sunny LA uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> to find some sunshine, uh -huh. um, you know, it, it just, uh, uh, my friend Cindy, she called me and she said, hey, we've got this position, I know you're looking, are you interested? Right. You know, you can prove yourself. And I, I said, yeah, I'll give it a try. And right. it, it worked out for the best, really. Right. And how long have you been working with it? About two years now. Oh, okay. We started production on Bite Me One in August of 2010. Oh. So Zombie with an X, we started, I think, back in 2004 or 2005. Uh, it was one of the original web series out there. I, you know, it, you can't find much beyond, you know, 2007, 2006. But um, we started producing it with creator James Farr. He is um, a creative force in the, the animation VFX world and, and director. Um, he taught himself how to animate through Zombie with an X. It was an opportunity for us to work Work in the web series world. We hadn't previously tried it. It was something that was up and coming and we could see its potential. And so collaborating with James, we produced an episode about every six months uh, through about 2008. And so um, it, it's a fun uh, sort of dark series about a zombie who actually has a conscious, a conscience. And uh, works to help save a little girl amidst a zombie apocalypse. And uh, we garnered over 13 million views at the time. It, it really was big, but then we didn't continue with it, not really understanding the nature of how web series worked because, it, of course, it was new and, and how you needed to interact with the fans because that's really the whole concept of the Internet is, is the interaction and the voice. And so... Um, we we lost some some following there when it was picked up by a studio, uh, and they they sort of waited to figure out what to do with it, and and people moved on, and and we found other projects, and you know bite me being one of them, but then some of our own as well. But it taught us a good lesson about how the internet works, and actually one of my key roles then <laughs> with all of our our web properties and even with Bite Me, we, you love to do your own promotion. Uh, and so I'm on the internet every day, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, right. Tumblr, StumbleUpon, everywhere you can think of, I'm, I'm giving shout outs to okay. our actors, to mm -hmm. other projects, and it's really important to support other projects yes, too. There's, yeah. there's a whole sense of collaboration that mm -hmm. goes along with the, the nature of web series. Right. And, and um, while I don't think the studios have really grasped how to how to do that yet, they're on their way, and they'll be using companies like us to help right, them. Yeah, I mean, space guys in space. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sci-fi comedy web series that sort of pays homage to Red Dwarf and right. Laurel and Hardy. Right. Right. <laughs> it stars Jason Marsden, uh, David Levine, and Nicole Payson. Okay. And so Jason Marsden. Um, People might know him as like DJ's girlfriend from Full House right, or Step right. by Step. Right. That's where he, he made his name as a child actor, okay. but he right. works more recently in voiceover. He does the voices for video games like Diablo 3 oh, and okay. Skyrim. He was the voice in Spirited Away, and I think right now he's working on Garfield. Oh, he's great. a fun right. and exciting guy, really experienced, great to work with, an amazing actor, and it was so good to see him on set. The choices that he made and how he did it, and he was such a mentor for the other two actors. Um, uh, Dave and Nicole are both experienced but young and it's always uh, you know an opportunity, a great opportunity to work with a force who's been in the business for a while. Nicole comes from Anyone But Me, the really popular um, web series yeah, about right, the right. young girl couple uh, in New York, I right. believe it is. And then Dave has more of a name in independent film. He just did a, a movie called Absentia. So we're really proud of our team. You know. Sure, Inside the Legend, it's our new comedy talk show about history and fiction's most notorious figures. So the premise is there are two hosts and they're always in some sort of feud. The thing is, is there's only one host ever present because the other is constantly sabotaging the other. But that affords us the opportunity to have the other host actually be the other character. 
So the series stars Phil Lamar and Vanessa Ragland. And you might know Phil Lamar from Mad TV, Futurama, um, Pulp Fiction. And uh, Vanessa Ragland, she is in Pop My, Pul uh, Pop My Culture Pop... <laughs> She's in Pop My Culture podcast oh. and um, this improv troupe called The Spanglers. Okay. And so she just has comedic chops and really can keep up with Phil, which is good because he's so experienced. Yes. And they're hilarious together. So every week we have Chaz Hannigan and or Rhonda Coco Pele, and they're the hosts. And then they switch off with their guests. So uh, one of the first episodes is... Um, Chaz Hannigan interviewing the axe murderer from the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, Lizzie Borden. And of course, you know, we take her as this emo goth punk chick with a little bit of a twist in the brain <laughs> and, and pr uh, produce this three minute clip that you can watch at work or whatever. And uh, it's just a fun comedy series and every week they switch off. So, you know, I think we're bringing in uh, Shakespeare, Arachne, Medusa, Beowulf, you know, all these really interesting characters. And we have a website where I actually post up a little bit of the true history because I know that even as producing, I had to go up on Wikipedia with some of the people. <laughs> Our writer was a little bit beyond me in a couple of episodes, but they're all very funny. And so this was a, this is an in-house, this is this is one of our original properties, and um, it's it's a three camera talk show. We just we built a set and we shot it in five days, and oh, sixteen okay. episodes. Wow! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dungeon Bastard Dungeon is Bastard. one of <laughs> yeah. So Dungeon Bastard is another one of our original properties, and it specifically targets the D and D crowd. Right. Well, not just D and D because there are so many other role playing games out yes. there, but really like the role playing game crowd. So there's Pathfinder, there's D&D, &D, there's, yeah, there's so many out there, I don't even know. And I have to be honest, I don't play them. I'm a tabletop gamer. We are all gamers. It, it, it has to be tattooed and verified when you work for the company. But, but I am more of a board gamer and video gamer. So um, yeah, Tom Lommel is the, the dungeon bastard. And he's essentially this douchebag adventure coach who's going to tell you how to win at D&D &D his way, which isn't always the best way but at least it's a funny way <laughs> and so the episodes are about three to five minutes each and they come out every other week um, opposite inside the legend and we're in our third season with that we just oh, keep wow. rolling them out and um, he's really taking off uh, he's going to Gen Con which is one of the big gaming conferences every year and he's hosting their Emmy Awards which is essentially gaming's version of the Academy Awards so that was another original Mm -hmm. It's really taking off. Like I said, we know how to speak geek. It's yes. our language <laughs> and we own it. <laughs> think big, think smart, and know your audience, I think. Um, one of the things that we do when we produce a new show, we have limited budgets and so does everybody else. And, and the thing is, is when you're first starting to produce a brand new show, you can call in favors mm -hmm. to get an episode or two out. After that, it's really hard. So if you want to continue to produce your show, plan a budget. You know, figure out how much all the costs are because there are rentals and, and how much is your people's time worth. Um, and then also think about your set. We try and find uh, or create one location sets with uh, a small amount of actors. Um, so we're not having to change locations. Right. We keep the episodes short, mm -hmm. so we try and, and um, do like two to three episodes a day, okay, okay. which allows us mm -hmm. to, we happen to be able to do it be, in, during the week because right. we're a company that, right. <laughs> we're all on payroll. Yes. Um, but for folks who have weekends, you could probably do four episodes in a weekend mm -hmm. if you did it a Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, but don't let, let, you know, the fact that you're doing a web series limit your creativity. Um, yes, I think I would say that like the cream is starting to rise to the top, mm -hmm. both in the quality of production, it really is becoming a vehicle uh, that is more competitive where uh, s cinematographers are really becoming involved in this forum as uh, an ability to showcase what they are capable mm -hmm. of doing. Mm -hmm. So when you do it, make sure you have some element of quality. If you have poor production value because you can't afford everything, make sure you have a really tight script that speaks to people 
and then put it up in places where it's going to get views. So yes, YouTube and all those different sites that you can put them on, but then you're going to want to market to who's going to be watching the show, you know, is your show women, is your show video gamers, is your show dancers, is, is your show foodies, like talk to your audience specifically because they're going to be the ones who are going to lift you up and really support you. So what I'd like to highlight today from my interview with Paige was when she stressed the importance of web content reaching for higher production values, higher quality. As we see with Epic Level Entertainment, their quality level on all their productions is very high. And web series producers need to focus on their content from the very beginning, from the script, from the acting, from the rehearsing of your actors, uh, the directing, lighting, sound. All elements of your production should strive for that higher level. We want to raise the bar, or continue to raise the bar, because the bar has been raised in the last few years on web series content. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but I'm really passionate about this because I really see the web as an avenue for independent producers to get their foot in the door or to make content exclusively for the web. Because as we all know, you're watching this show, you most likely believe how I believe that the web is the future of content delivery. And A production companies, B, C, and D production companies can all get into that field without worrying about the, the gatekeepers of the past but you need to raise your production levels because the consumer wants something that they can see clearly, they can hear clearly, they wanna feel that this is a real program that they can invest their time in and watch it and expect a certain level of quality to be there. So us as web series producers, we need to reach for that. You know, gone are the days of just throwing anything up on the web and calling it a web series. You need to really concentrate and do your pre-production and get your project as polished as possible. I'm James Tucker, and you've been watching The Web Series Show.